Hello again. Continuing from my last tutorial on building a track structure, this time around I'm going to talk about block and sensor objects. A block, as defined by this application, simply represents a collection of tracks, usually adjacent to each other, that are electrically connected. Its use is to determine the occupancy of a rail section, especially when paired up with a sensor. While in edit mode, a block object can be added either from the object browser or from the switchboard. Assuming you are in edit block mode, right click anywhere on the switchboard to add a block. In both cases, a block object will be added to the blocks collection. Next is associating tracks with our newly created block. This can be performed in two ways. From the track side, go to track mode, select a track, and associate a block with it from the list of available blocks. Or this can be done probably easier from the block side. Select a block and add a track to it from the context menu. T is listed for the shortcut of this function, so I'll use it for the rest of the tracks. Note that this shortcut works as an include-exclude toggle. I'll name this spur1 for easier identification. Notice how the tracks are now displayed as a contiguous section, indicating that they are electrically connected. And any sensing object associated with this block will treat these tracks as a single sensing unit. Now I'll create a second block here and add some tracks to it. I'll call it side one. and then finish off the rest of the blocks to complete the layout. Generally, it's a good idea for all track objects to be assigned to blocks, even if they're not attached to a physical sensor, if for no other reason than to have a visual display of your electrical isolations. An easy way to see which tracks are left unassigned is to briefly go into operation mode. Here, all unassigned tracks are highlighted in red. Back to edit mode. And two more blocks for the unassigned. back to operation mode and all are shown as assigned now. Now I've seen some confusion about how to implement situations where a block passes over or under another. Uh, let's look at a situation like this. This rail passes under here. and over here. I'll add a block for this. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is just because the rail is interrupted in this block or this block, it doesn't mean that these are not contiguous anymore. They are still treated as one block, as shown by the selection highlight, because they were defined as such through your track to block association. So the thing to take away from here is that tracks don't have to be next to each other to belong to the same block as they do physically, as long as the switchboard representation makes sense to you. Okay, moving to sensors. To create a sensor, 
right click on the sensors collection and add a sensor. Assuming you have a sensing device attached to the local net network, you could at this point activate a sensor to see what packet it generates down here in the local net packets log. I just tripped a sensor on my BDL16 which now appeared. Looking at the packet, the DBL16 at address 10 port 5 has reported an on state, otherwise known as an occupied state. Now to bind my new sensor to this packet configuration in the properties area. My input device is a BDL16 so I leave it so. Set my device address to 10 and port to 5 to match the packet. I go to operation mode to test. And sure enough when I trigger the physical sensor on and off my bound sensor object turns on and off as well. Next I'll bind the sensor object to a block. Back to edit mode. Click on a block. I'll pick side one and assign it a sensor from the list. There's the one I just created. Now if I go back to operation mode and trigger my physical sensor, we can see the block indicates the occupancy reported by the sensor. Also note in the CTC event display how each object in the binding chain is reporting its own state change. If you don't have a physical sensor available on your local net network, you could simulate a sensor activation by manually changing the sensor's state. Don't forget you have to be in operation mode for this to work. And as you can see, the block occupancy behaves the same. Now sensor objects don't necessarily have to be bound to blocks. That's just one common application. They could be used, for example, as a trigger mechanism to launch a script, which in turn can do just about anything. I'll talk more about binding events to scripts later, but these are the basics to get you started with blocks and sensors. Till next time, thanks for listening.